Looking back over the outstanding movie year that was 2015, I realized more than ever I have a split personality as a film critic. My affections were divided between pictures big and small, ranging from a galactic blockbuster screened in IMAX to a tiny Sundance Discovery shot on iPhones. Here are my top 10 favorite movies of 2015, presented in reverse order to maintain the suspense. Number 10, Tangerine. Shot entirely on iPhones, and with a budget that wouldn't cover cab fares on a blockbuster, Sean S. Baker's indie dramedy makes virtue of necessity. In this Sundance sensation about transgendered sex workers, a pimp, a cabbie, and an angry mother-in-law in, in low-down Los Angeles. Number nine, Amy. The year's best documentary bears witness to the triumph and tragedy of Amy Winehouse, a Grammy champ claimed by alcohol poisoning at the age of 27. Asif Kapadia's unstinting yet compassionate film shows how songs like Rehab and Back to Black mirrored the British songbird's hard life. Number eight, Inside Out. Deep thoughts meet high spirits in Pixar's magnificent head trip, which takes us inside a young girl's mind and also along the yellow brick road. Actors Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Bill Hader, Louis Black, and Mindy Kaling vividly animate the emotions joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. Number seven, Sleeping Giant. This feature debut by Toronto's Andrew Cividino is a resounding coming of ager. Set in a momentous summer around Lake Superior, grand leaps both physical and emotional await the film's combustible teen males, played by promising newcomers Jackson Martin, Nick Serino, and Reese Moffat. Number six, The Martian. Give Ridley Scott a great story and even the sky is no limit. Celebrating ingenuity over contrivance, this thrilling return to outer space for the sci-fi stalwart finds crackerjack adventure in the stranding of a Mars astronaut, played by Matt Damon, whose hope for rescue will put two planets to the test. Number five, Spotlight. Good old fashioned journalism makes for great drama and Thomas McCarthy's retelling of the Boston Globe's 2002 expose of a pedophilia scandal and cover up within the Roman Catholic Church. Michael Keaton, Rachel McAdams, Mark Ruffalo, and Leah Schreiber make ink and shoe leather exciting. Number four, Mad Max Fury Road. With George Miller revisiting the post-apocalyptic wasteland and Tom Hardy nailing the asphalt warrior role that made Mel Gibson famous, everything amazingly feels like a fresh idea in this action reboot. Charlize Theron seals the deal as a female road demon who is every bit Max's equal and then some. Number three, Son of Saul, a sobering center about the Holocaust and one man's struggle to regain his humanity within the Auschwitz death camp. Laszlo Nemesis' feature debut brings home the reality of the Nazi horror while also leaving much to the imagination. Number two, Todd Haynes' lustrous drama of forbidden 1950s romance, carrying Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara in the year's best love story, reminds us how bad things used to be for non-traditional couples. Carol also invites us to remember how beautiful mad passion can be and to swoon along with it. And my number one movie of 2015, Star Wars The Force Awakens. The year's biggest movie also happens to be the best, and you don't have to embrace the dark side to say it. J.G. Abrams' terrific reboot of the beloved sci-fi franchise definitely connects the original Star Wars cast and story with new players and inspiration. It's the most fun I had at the movies all year. That's it for 2015. Thank you for watching and reading, and if you'd like more of my reviews, please check out my book, Movies I Can't Live Without, which is available for purchase through starstore.ca. For the Toronto Star, I'm Peter Howell.